Alex Ravel, a huge second half performance, but ultimate heartbreak. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I thought we were magnificent second half. I thought we, we really showed how good we can be. Um, and in probably the first 20 minutes as well in the first half, I thought that until they scored, we were the better side. And then you get a goal completely out of the blue, really. And um, and then obviously after that, we, we, we huffed and puffed, I think is the best way to describe it. And But then a few words at half-time in terms of how we improve. And you could see it straight away that the football that we played was was excellent at times. It was just a matter of time. Um, and um, yeah, to, to to lose the game, I think on penalties is is really disappointing because of the effort that the, the players showed in the second half, and they fully deserve to win this game, hands down. Um, so I'm I'm disappointed for them. What did you say at the break? Because you were still in it at half time, obviously, but that first goal of the second half. If you get it early enough, you know, it's, it re is really very much game on. I think that was the biggest message you still in the game. Um, I think that we weren't losing because of someone that was tearing us apart. It was a goal shot, deflection, five rebounds and then hits and then we, they score. And then that was the only goal. And then and then we're in the game and we, we, we played some good football. We found the tens and probably just our last little pass wasn't on and, and, and we didn't quite make it. And I just think that we... Um, we told them that we have to switch the play and we have to be better at getting the ball out to our wide players and, and we did that much better and ultimately the intensity, the intensity changed and we're a team that have to play with intensity um, and when that drops you can see it. So um, hopefully the second half proves that to them because they can see it and they can feel it and obviously the result will hurt them because of the amount of effort they put in and the way that you can see, you know, in the seventh minute of injury time so um, yeah I think that they just they just listen and and, and and they know they know when they're not quite at it and, and they produce a, a brilliant second half Did you feel that perhaps decisions didn't go your way I mean perhaps they were lucky to end up with 11 players on the pitch and then seven minutes of added time at the death uh, I don't think there's a perhaps about it it proved it that they brought the player off thought the decisions uh, were uh, I, they're not they're not listen they're inexcusable if I'm honest I, I, I it's a penalty at the end the last kick is is a penalty you can see it he he completely wipes James Daly out it is he's there we have the same at Bradford we get laughed at when it's a penalty I I gotta be honest I I find it really hard because you try and keep yourself uh, calm, but when decisions happen like that, um, the the antics at the end with the penalty, nothing happens. Um, really hard to take, if I'm honest, because I, I, we didn't deserve that. Um, and yeah, you have to watch your mouth what you say. But the, the standard, in my opinion, at the minute is is really tough um, to make sure that you stay calm because it's, it's hard. Gareth Ainsworth couldn't be more complimentary at the final whistle. He's a nice guy. Um, listen, you have to do what you have to do to win a game of football, and, and he's and they've done it. They've won, they've won on penalties, um, and he's doing a like, he's doing a tremendous job. So uh, that's that's for everyone to see. Um, but obviously, for me, I, I'm just disappointed because I, I, our players deserve more today. They deserve more respect. Uh, they don't deserve to be treated like we are being treated. Um, and all we can do now is roll our sleeves up, realise that we've got to stick together uh, because it won't, people won't make the decision for us. We've got to make sure that we work together and, and, and make sure we win games just on our own without relying on anyone to help us. And there must be a realisation amongst the squad that they can go on to better things. It's huge. There's no need for a realisation there. They're good players. Um, you know, we, We've gone today with, with seven injuries today. Jack Smith's come in from having COVID a few weeks ago and he's played 90 minutes and given absolutely everything. Absolutely. He's what a, what a top kid to, to be able to do that. Um, you know, we had three youth team players on the bench and one in the stands who was 19th man. Arthur Reed comes in and gives a performance. We've got centre forwards who are still trying to get fit because they missed a long time of pre-season and unfortunately 
unintentionally lost one. It's, uh, it feels like uh, everything's against us a little bit at the minute. No, don't want to be a sob story, but it feels like that. It does, but just get on with it. You, you get your head down. And like I said, we don't rely on anyone to help us. We'll do it ourselves. We'll get together. The fans today were outstanding. Absolutely brilliant. They, they recognise how much effort the players put in. And if you do that every week, we will be able to do something this year. And we will be a fantastic club for people to come and look at and watch and play. And um, I'm really proud of, of what we've achieved because we're doing it the right way.